I've played a lot of games, and when we talk about PC games, while there is a finite amount of games out there, the chance of me experiencing all of them, probably not gonna happen. Not in my lifetime, at least. But I've played plenty, and you know, there's some good ones, and there's some bad ones. The games I'm gonna talk about today made me want to shit solid bricks out. That is to say, solid, compacted, alumina, silica, lime, and iron oxide out of my body. Repeatedly. These aren't the worst games on the PC, but they come pretty close to me. And bear in mind, this is just my opinion. You might love these games, and if you do, I can't take that away from you. So keep an open mind as we talk about the next few games. Let's begin. This is the first Cabela's licensed title ever created, all the way back in 1997. And for what it is, it isn't too bad. The issue I have with it is that it's just as boring as boring can be, right? The whole point of the game is to shoot three different shotguns and three different sports shooting exercises, be it skeet, trap, or sporting clays, and that's literally it. It's redundant, and like I've mentioned for other Cabela's titles, it's for a very niche group of people. You're all-American, truck-driving, dip-spitting, Fox News-watching, dick-beating country boys. In fact, I've only ever seen Cabela's early software sold in actual Cabela's stores. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I got a question for you. Can you beat my skeet? Probably. I only played it for like an hour before it was played out. There's really no replayability once you get your high score. Oh boy, <laughs> Delta Force. This was a pain in the ass to get running. In fact, I had to get a virtual machine up and running to even manage to get the game to play without crashing. So right off the bat, it was already on my naughty boy list, right? When you think of Delta Force, think of Wish.com Ghost Recon because that's essentially what it is. You control one player in a fire team versus being able to control multiple people. And you have specific missions of which can involve assassination, rescue, obtaining an important object, etc. Here's the issue. It's horrible. Every weapon aims and shoots with zero respect to physics, so you can snipe someone 500 yards away with a pistol. But that also goes the other way. There's hit scanning, and if they see you, even a pixel of you, they will unleash an unholy hell on you. This game is very much a game of attrition, and you'll find yourself loading and saving quite often. You might think, is this franchise still alive? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And there's a new game coming out soon. It was announced in 2023 called Delta Force Hawk Ops. I have no clue if it'll be good because, well, I've only ever played Delta Force 1 and 2. So that being said, I do have a long way to go. When I approach my rules of release, I have very specific rules. I play franchises in order, and if that franchise has a distinctive spiritual predecessor, I play that one instead. That's why I played Demon Souls instead of Dark Souls, and in the case of Fallout, I played Wasteland. Now this game is very archaic, it's the most bare bones early RPG set in a dystopian post-nuclear environment that you can possibly think of. I did not enjoy this, and I did not make it far because I was either extremely bored by the combat or confused on what I needed to do because some things are tied behind time limits. That being said, if you want to play the original Wasteland, I do suggest that you play Wasteland Remastered because it's essentially the same game, just with tremendous quality of life improvements for modern gamers, many of which involve the UI being updated or the combat mechanics actually making sense. The plot of Wasteland is simple and very similar to Fallout. We play as a group of rangers that seek out a force that's trying to eliminate the remnants of humanity with an AI at the helm. Sound familiar? Wasteland as a franchise does still exist, with Wasteland 3 being released in 2020. Far Cry is a franchise I wanted to get into for a while because it still thrives to this day. Ubisoft has had it as one of their flagship franchises, much like Assassin's Creed. When you play Far Cry, think of it as a tech demo that someone took a little bit too seriously. Well, Crytek took it too seriously. Now don't get me wrong, the game looks gorgeous because that's what the Cry engine is all about, looking damn good. The problem I have with the game is that it is horrid due to hit scanning. 
For those of you who don't know, it's the equivalent of a camera seeing you and just nuking you out of existence. And in the case of Far Cry, there's even times where Crytek messed up the collision physics and you'll be shot through mountains, tents, vehicles, fucking another planet. It's bad. And it was a complete chore to get through. Thankfully, the franchise got much better as the games went on, with the most recent being Far Cry 6, which I've heard great things about. I know nothing about Ford or how they managed to sneak out software in the late 80s. I know that they ran on DOS and that they were on floppy disks, and in no way would I have considered my childhood worth it if I was a child of the 80s and my dad commandeered the family computer for the sole purpose of showing me the 1988 lineup of Ford. Hey son, I see you're playing an amazing game right now, but check out this 1988 limited Crown Victoria wagon or this Ford Taurus. Ho ho ho! A Tempo 2 door! In the later shithole versions of this game, you get to drive these cars and they all handle like rhinoceros is riding a unicycle. They suck mad peen and I've played six of them. They're all the same. Just product placement bloatware from Ford. You know Mech, right? The folks who made every trail game you could imagine, be it Oregon Trail, Amazon Trail, Yukon Trail, you know, the works. Well, they made point and clicks occasionally, and I was excited to check this one out. It was a demo on the Yukon Trail disc that I owned as a kid, same as Odell Down Under, a fish game, which I do hope to play in the future as well. But Museum Madness, once I actually played it, I was dumbfounded at how horrible this game was. The plot is generic, you play as a kid who doesn't even have a name, who gets invited to a museum to unfuck the fuckery that's happening at the National Museum. Now in the demo, we fixed issues with a few exhibits, but in the full game, you're dealing with 25 exhibits that at any point can go haywire if you miss a trivia question. And no, these aren't easy puzzles. Fundamentally, these are puzzles that the demographic it's intended for would struggle tremendously with. As an adult with three fucking college degrees, this game infuriated me. This one might rustle your jimmies a little bit, and I don't particularly care. If you like the game, good on you. If you don't, then I guess it's cool you agree with me. Another World is a bad game, but it's a bad game that looks good. Now, you might recognize this game as Out of This World, and that's the other naming convention for it. But I played Out of This World on the SNES, and it was hot garbage. When I played the PC version, while it played better, it still boiled down to a monumental amount of trial and error that really compounds on your patience. On almost every screen, there is a potential to die, and it happens so suddenly that sometimes you're caught off guard, so you need to memorize about 10 screens worth of action, and that wasn't for me. I did beat it, but it wasn't something I bragged about, and this was on the PC, so no save states, only suffering. Delphine Software, patent pending, suffering. I do need to play the other half of this game, though. It's called Heart of the Alien, and it's on the Sega CD, but it's really expensive. Hero Quest is interesting and it's important. Now you might not recognize Hero Quest if you're a younger viewer, but for the more experienced audience that I maintain, you might recall the 1989 board game Hero Quest, which was made by another company that you might know called Games Workshop. Now while this might seem like a board game, it isn't. It's more like a game system. There's a game master and he creates dungeons. Got it? Cool. Now let's take the board game and make it a co-op PC game, like where two friends sit in front of a keyboard and walk in isometric corridors dealing with some of the most basic combat you can imagine. That's what it is. It's a PC game adaptation of a game system that was born from a board game ideology from Milton Bradley. Now what's interesting is that the game does have a sequel, Hero Quest 2 Legacy of Sorosil, and the creators would make another game, Blood Bowl, which is like a football game. Then in 1995, HeroQuest's story and lore and the whole idea of it transitioned to this fancy new thing called Warhammer Fantasy. So I played this because it's part of the Warhammer franchise, true story. That being said, this one is worth passing. And if you want to play the real game, just bite down and buy the board game and get a fellowship of fellow enthusiasts to play this with you. It's not fun. <laughs> We 
We all love Contra. I love Contra. Contra is a fine game on the NES. It's probably one of the best, honestly, and I've got hours upon hours of playing it alone and playing it with friends. It's a great, solid game. And then Konami ported it to DOS, where it looks like this. Are you having fun? Let's just let the sounds play. At no point during this game did anything make sense. The controls are dreadful. The color palette is unforgivable, and the gameplay is horrible. I do mean astronomically horrible. This is an unforgivable port of such a time-cherished game, and there's no excuse for it either. Grizor on the Amstrad CPC looks phenomenal and plays well as well. Hell, even the MSX version, which has this weird one-stop swap shop, is amazing, but this DOS port is something to behold. I'd rather shit in my hands and clap than ever play Contra for DOS ever again. Do not play this. It is not good. <laughs> in fact, it is quite ungood. I loved Amnesia. I'm not usually for helpless pro tag games, but Amnesia did it well. Great quality jump scares, a feeling of hopelessness, running around from naked dudes. It was pretty much everything I could hope for in a horror game. Again, much like To The Moon, a game I mentioned in the previous episode, which I'll link down in the description, I knew about this game long before I had ever played it, because it all but kickstarted the careers of many of our favorite Let's Players around 2010-ish, eh, right? And so I had seen the game through and through, and I knew what to expect, and I was still impressed by it. Then the DLC came out, Justine. Justine at best is a 20 minute game that boils down to either choosing to save a person or kill them. It's like a moral challenge game. The thing is, killing them is stupid easy, right? Saving them? convoluted as shit. It's so abstract and unfun that I just could not for the life of me get into it. It's a shame too because when you have such a powerful cultural impact as Amnesia The Dark Descent had to the point where people were even checking out older games made by Frictional and then you release a subpar DLC, it's just not good for business. From what I've heard, even the sequel A Machine for Pigs wasn't that great either, but to each their own. And those are 10 games I feel are best left alone in the PC spectrum of gaming. What do you think of this list? Feel free to comment down below what you think. I do respond to every single comment, even the mean ones. Also, if you get a chance, hit that subscribe button so that you can join my gaming journey as it unfolds before your very eyes. Finally, the single most important thing that you can do is hit that thumbs up button as it allows my videos and the other projects I work on every single day to gain just a little bit more visibility. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, Fortify her out.